We thank the Lord for you. Bwana sifiwe. Nasema bwana sifiwe. Have you had a great week? Have you enjoyed your week? Did you fast? Let me see by a show of hands, those of us who fasted. And in this church, we don't lie. Bwana sifiwe. If you realize you have a neighbor who has not fasted, bring them here. We need to pray for them right away in Jesus' mighty name. Ask them, if you are not fasting, what are you doing? Bwana sifiwe. We have also been doing, have you been joining in the prayers in the morning? Yeah. Every morning at uh, five in the morning we are there. We are doing some prayers in Jesus mighty name. Let me see by a show of hand again how many of us have been joining. You know I've been seeing, I've been seeing. He, he, Ebu, that neighbor who is not lifting up the hand, Ebu, bring them here. We need, we need to, to lay hands on them suddenly. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. Ask that neighbor whether they've been joining in. They've been joining in. Mm -hmm. Oh, now they're not answering. All of a sudden, they've started interceding and praying. Amen. Please remember that uh, every, every day, every day we are praying. Apart from Sundays, Sundays are the, is the only day that we are not praying at five in the morning. But the rest of the days from Monday all the way up to Saturday, please take a note that we are praying. We are praying at exactly five in the morning. There is a Zoom, uh, is it Zoom text? A Zoom link. Hallelujah. There is a Zoom link that uh, is being sent into different group. If your neighbor is saying which link, it's because they haven't joined a cell group. Ask them, ask them whether they have seen a link. It's not a rhetorical question. Let them answer you. <laughs> Have they seen a link? If your neighbor has not seen a link, just lift up your hands slowly. One as if you, eh, I see a few people. Tell them join a cell. Hallelujah. We are, uh, there's a link that is sent every single day by the media team led by Moji. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a link that is sent every day so that we can join in the following morning. Uh, uh, exactly at five. I've been seeing our numbers. God, God has really blessed us. about 270 people are joining in for prayers in Jesus' mighty name. If you're not joining in, you should not be clapping. That's a... What a severe. Amen? I said amen. Amma, you appreciating those who have joined in? Oh, good, good, good. Amen. So please take a note of that. To the gentlemen, I have been seeing the names. And I've realized that uh, men, we are few. Amen. I encourage a man who is next to you and tell them, hey, now if you're not praying, who is praying? Mm -hmm. Please let's join in at exactly, tomorrow at five, I'll be the one leading in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I said amen. We also want to thank uh, our partners, TV47, who have come on board to be airing our Sunday service. We bless the Lord for them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you ready for the word? I said, are you ready for the word? Yes. Last Sunday, we started off with the, the word of the year and just downloading and unpacking the word for the year. What is our word for the year? It is our year of establishment. Amen. And look at a neighbor who is next to you and tell that neighbor, neighbor, you are being established in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And our theme verse is found in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 2. Do you remember? From verse number 1, that's where we are. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 1. What does the Bible say? Look at what the Bible says. What does it say? One to go. The word from God which Isaiah, son of Amos, saw in a vision concerning the nation of Judah mm -hmm. and its capital, Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Le nation, can, can we take it one more time? One to go. The, the word from God, God which Isaiah, Isaiah son of Amos, saw, saw in a vision concerning, concerning the nation of Judah, Judah and its capital, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That, that note right there is me who was writing my notes, Mwana Sifiwe. And I said, the nation of Kenya and its capital, which is Nairobi. Uh -huh. What is the word of the Lord? Want to go? Now, now it, it came come to, to pass. pass that in the last days, days the, the mountain, mountain of, the of the house of the Lord will be firmly established as the highest of the mountains. 
So the, uh, the, the book of Isaiah or the Isaiah the prophet is telling us that in the last days something is going to happen. What is that is, that is going to happen? The mountain of the Lord shall be elevated as the highest mountain. Guess what? That mountain is the mountain of the house of the Lord. What we call Zion. What we call what? Zion is going to be elevated as the highest mountain. And guess who is in, 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 is in that mountain? Me and you, we are in that mountain. Hallelujah. So talk to a neighbor who is next to you and tell that neighbor, neighbor, this year you don't have an option. You are going to be elevated in Jesus' mighty name. And you're going to be elevated as the highest mountain. Uh, that neighbor is not a good neighbor. Turn to the other neighbor and tell the neighbor, hey neighbor, I'm prophesying to you that in this year, because you are in the mountain of the Lord, you are going to be elevated as the highest mountain in Jesus' name. That means when you are elevated, ladies and gentlemen, there is going to be visibility on you in Jesus' mighty name. You are going to be seen. Hallelujah. Those of you who have been desiring that you would be seen, you are going to be seen in this year in Jesus' mighty name. Why? You are elevated. Talk to a neighbor who is next to you and tell that neighbor, hey neighbor, the reason for you being seen is that the mountain of the Lord which you are in is elevated as the highest mountain. Uh, somebody should have clapped to the Lord. Hallelujah. As the mountain also is being elevated, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be seen. Hallelujah. That means you must put things in your house in I say born as if you were. You cannot just be seen anywhere and everywhere. Tuelewane. Ate tuelewane. Lazima miendendo ibadili. Because if you are lifted, you will be. You see now your neighbor is not even saying amen. Hallelujah. Bwana sifiwe. You cannot be smooched all around. In, in the... Did, 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 mash, did say, but, uh, did, did. Every corner of this city, Mimi Mtua Metoka Naivas. Hey, praise the Lord. Five. Praise the name of the Lord. I say, praise the name of the Lord. You know, uh, 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 just listen to the story. Yesterday we we were doing a wedding at uh, the the the, the Mara. It was a uh, it, it was a destination wedding. I'm prophesying over your life in Jesus' name. In fact, you will see the pictures. The buffaloes were there. I was a bit worried, but uh, <laughs> but but it was a destination wedding. Ladies and gentlemen. As I, we took this, uh, the, the, the small flights that Buenos Aires that carry about ten people. Buenos Aires. No, no. Buenos Aires. We are sorry. We are sorry. And each of each way going and coming back. Guess what? The pilot knew you. Now the issue is not the pilot knowing you. Is that the was we passing? Well as if you were. I said, well as if you were. This year you can't hide. Aya. Pussy Peleke Masaimar. Ah, the mountain of the Lord is being elevated. I see the mountain of the Lord is being elevated. At the e e apartment, akuna mtu ananijua umeva mask. Let those who have an ear hear. Yeah. Uh, uh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Na kama ulikosha peleka nguo rudisha. Nimewacha, nimewacha hiyo maneno. Verse number 3. What does it say? Want to go and will be exalted above things. And all the nations will see you. And many Come and say, For the Lord will go out from Zion, mm -hmm. and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Come, 
Let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house, temple of the Lord, Jacob. That he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. You, house of Jacob, come, let us live in the Lord's life. Let us live in the Lord's life. Let us live in the Lord's life. Hallelujah. So what is this establishment that we are talking about? I want to move quickly because this one we discussed last Sunday. What is this establishment that we are talking about? Want to go? It is to make firm. It is to settle or it is to do what? To enact. So when we are talking about establishment, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about making something firm. What are we talking about? Making something firm. Or what are we saying? We are saying that as we make something firm, we are enacting something. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And we said there are four areas of our lives that in this year must be established. The number one uh, area of our lives that we said must be established was what? Our spiritual life. Talk to a neighbor and tell the neighbor, hey neighbor, in this year, you must be established spiritually. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? What it means, I've written for you there. It is, when, it is when the heavens know your name as a man or a woman of God. Are we understanding one another? So what does it mean for you to be established spiritually? It is for you to come up to a place where the heavens, they know you by name as a man or a woman of God. Please quickly just ask a neighbor who is next to you. Do you think the heaven knows you as a man of God or as a woman of God? Mm. If you see your neighbor is not asking you, it's because they don't want to be asked. Just leave them. Buona <laughs> sifiwe. So what is, this, what is this being known in the heavenly realm? Ladies and gentlemen, is that you shall become a giant in the spirit. Why? Because the heavens recognize you. The heavens know you. You have become what? A giant in the spirit. Look at a neighbor and tell the neighbor, hey neighbor, this row is only for giants. If you're not waking up in the morning to pray, mm, mm, mm. Uh, my, my, talk, talk to them and tell them, my neighbor, you're not even fasting. How do you propose you will become a giant in the spirit? Uh, talk to them and tell them, hey, neighbor, please find a seat uh, behind a bit. Because tell them, because this row is for giants. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Because ladies and gentlemen, we saw last Sunday that it is possible for you not to be known in the spirit realm. Look at what the scripture says. What does the scripture say? The scripture says in the book of Acts 19, in the amplified version, in verse number 15, let's read it together, one to go. But the evil spirit retorted, uh -huh. I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus. Shh. This is the spirit speaking. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that spirits can speak. They have a language. They can speak. And there is a spirit here that is speaking. What is the spirit, what is the spirit saying? I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus. And I know about Paul. But as for you, who are you? The spirit did not know these men who are called the sons of Sceva. It's even worse, ladies and gentlemen, because Sceva, like I told you last Sunday, was a high priest. And Sceva is not even mentioned by the spirit. Buona sifiwe. I say buona sifiwe. The spirit is saying, Jesus I know. Paul I know. You, I have no idea who you are. Look at a neighbor and tell the neighbor, hey neighbor, that is not your story this year. That's why my neighbor, you will fast this year. That's why my neighbor, you will pray this year. That's why my neighbor, you will come for the prayer watch. And I will not allow you to didimia. 
Bwana asifiwe. Because there are some people who are not known in the spirit realm. There are some people who are not recognized in the spirit realm. I want to ask you a question today. If the spirit realm was to open up, do they know who you are? Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've written something there in the scriptures. I've written something. So, how do go to the go to the next slide? Go to the next slide. So, how what does it mean for me to be established spiritually? What does it mean? And I told you last Sunday that it is to enter and to function in this role of priesthood. Because each one of us, ladies and gentlemen, has been called into this role of priesthood. Look at what the scripture says in the book of First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. What does it say? One to go, but you are a chosen people. What are they? A we, priesthood. priesthood. Uh -huh. A holy nation. A people to be his very own and to proclaim the wonderful deeds of the one who called you out of darkness into, into his, his marvelous darkness. light. Peter is writing to us and he's saying, because we are a chosen people, ladies and gentlemen, we have become what? A royal priesthood. Look at a neighbor and tell the neighbor, neighbor, you are a priest. So, ladies and gentlemen, how do we grow spiritually? Is that we must come into this role of priesthood. We must come into the, because it's not for a chosen few. The Bible says we are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. It's not just for the pastor. No. You are a priest in your house. Ah. Uh, you are a priest in your business. You are a priest in your career. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Some of you are not even saying amen because I said buona sifiwe. We have been chosen to become what? Priests in the house of God. Even in this house, we are priests. Look at a neighbor and, uh, who is next to you and tell that neighbor, hey neighbor, you may not know it, but you are a priest. So who is this priest? Who is a priest? Because we must find out first of all who is a priest so that we understand how do we grow spiritually. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, a priest is a mediator. That's what the priest used to do. What did the priest used to do? He would come and atone for the sins of the people. So what would the high priest do? He would go, take a uh, slaughter a, a, a ram or a goat or, a, or whatever, and take it to the holies of holies as an atonement for sin. He goes in with the sins of the people. But when he comes out, he comes out with, the, with the righteousness. Because as he goes to mediate for the sins of men and women, the sins are blotted out. And when he's coming out of the holies of holies, ladies and gentlemen, he comes out with the righteousness. So what is the work of the priest? The work of the priest is to mediate. The work of the priest is to intercede. So now, when you are being called a royal priesthood, what the Lord is saying is that you must become a mediator. That place of, of, of mediating is what we call intercessors. Who are intercessors? It is one who stands in the gap for others. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand, as you have been called a priest in the house of God, what that means is that you have become a mediator. You have become an intercessor. And I want to ask you a question. Because you are the priest to your house. You are the priest in that relationship. You are the priest in that school. You are the priest in the area that the Lord has placed you. Who is mediating? Who is mediating on behalf of your family? So, let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. And I asked you, if you, you are not praying for your own business, who is praying? You, you are not praying for your own relationship. Sasa we uko uko java na pronto, uko uko unatembea tu, having a good time. You are building your relationship on dates. And it's not a bad thing. You should go ahead and have them. 
ladies and gentlemen. But if you don't wake up to pray for your boyfriend, you don't wake up to pray for your girlfriend, you don't wake up to pray for your wife, you don't wake up to pray for your husband, who is doing it? I'm on your neighbor. Who is praying for you? Josh, who is praying for your music? If you don't take time much to come and pray for the music, you intercede for every song. You call Ben every song by name. Asante. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. If you are not doing it, let me ask you a question. Who is doing it? That's why, ladies and gentlemen, when you have been called into this position of priesthood, you must become a mediator. Stop putting your children on pressure. At you, oh, you must become number one. You must be, and you know now, squeeze your corner number one. Ni exceeding, you are exceeding expectation. We are just here, Levi. Sometimes, your son is exceeding expectation or doing excellent. Which is the other one? You are just putting them on pressure to perform. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you've been called as a priest in that home. You mediate for your children. What do you do? You enter your, clo your closet and your son has not been meeting in the uh, expectation. You pray for him. You come out of that prayer session and now your son is meeting expectation in Jesus' mighty name. Get into a place of prayer. Uta understand anataka nini? Those who have a near here. Praise the name of the Lord. But because you're not interceding, then you're working with your senses. You're working with your five senses. How many of you know that our five senses are limited? You can't do business because you see, in place poor, in place poor, I could do business. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you do business where God sends you. Ah. Have you not read the story of John the Baptist? John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. It didn't matter where he was. People came where he was. But you, you're not mediating. You're saying, you, me, my wife, I don't even know what they want. This girlfriend of mine, I can't even understand them. How will you understand that you have not ascended? Buona sifiwe. Ate buona sifiwe. But when in the morning you have ascended, you have mediated on her behalf. You, you have, because of your mediation in the morning, God gave you a word for her. Unamwambia, when I prayed today in the morning, I saw you, God, elevating you, lifting you up. And in this coming month, God is changing your story. You see her brighten up. She begins to tell you, tell me more. neighbor who is next to your other neighbor priesthood, priesthood is that you must become a mediator <laughs> ladies and gentlemen if we don't pray for this city who is praying for it if me and you we don't pray for this country who is praying for this nation that's why we must stand in our place uh, as intercessors uh, and we tell the lord kenya has to work uh, nairobi has to work uh, Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Why? You are an intercessor. That's why in this church, ladies and gentlemen, I told you, there are no intercessors. If you're not interceding for yourself, nobody. Oh, we umetulipa. Uko uko java unakula. Atipasi, remember me in your prayers. Remember me in your prayers. Even God says your sins I shall remember no more. Hallelujah. Look at a neighbor, tell the neighbor, neighbor, you must become a mediator. Hallelujah. Look at the, there's a scripture there for you. There's a scripture there for you. Jesus, 
is interceding for the leader of the church. This guy, he knows, I have already chosen my successor. Who is my successor? Is Simon Peter. Simon Peter, ladies and gentlemen, the enemy has already gone somewhere to ask for him. Him himself, he does not even know. That's why intercession is important, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to what the scripture says. Look at this. What does it say? Want to go? Luke, Luke 22 and verse number 31. Those who are following. Luke 22 and verse number, uh, uh, verse number 31. What does it say? Want to go? Simon, Simon. Listen. Satan has asked permission to sift all of you like wheat. Uh -huh. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. Satan has asked to swift you like what? Wheat. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not in this place of ascending, you cannot see this. Jesus is telling Peter, I have been where you have not been. Wait, what do you Kuna some arguments unaagiu na relatives wako. Ama unaagiu na your, your, your husband. Ama unaagiu na your wife. Those are tailored by the enemy. You must have been in a place where you have ascended for you to see what the enemy is doing. Planting a seed of bitterness. Planting a seed of, 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 of discouragement. You must be in a place of ascension, ladies and gentlemen. You have ascended for you to see what Jesus Christ is seeing. He's saying, where I have been, Satan has asked for you. And what has he asked to do? He has asked to swift you like wheat. But listen to what Jesus said. Jesus did not even rebuke the devil. What did he do? He said to Peter, I have prayed for you. In other words, I have stood in the gap. You don't even know. But I have stood in the gap for you. And he said, he begins with him because he's the leader of the church. And he tells him, and I know because I have stood in the gap on your behalf, you will be strengthened. So when you stand in the gap for people, and when you stand in the gap for your business, when you stand in the gap for this nation, ladies and gentlemen, there is an answer that comes forth. It's not in vain. Look at somebody and tell them it's not in vain. Wee, wee unaingia, unaingia kazi na kila mtu mwingine. Are you serious? We unafaku unaingia one hour before. You are there in the office. I decree that in this office, what you kosana. Nothing will go wrong here today in Jesus' mighty name. Wee kwanza unaingia ta late. Then when do unaingia uki uliza uko kuja pikwa chai? Leo atukunywe chai uko. Bwana asifiwe. Ase bwana asifiwe. Before your husband comes home in the evening as you are cooking, you are cooking for him because he's breaking in the evening. Hallelujah. I, I, I say hallelujah. As you are cooking some meat for him, you are preparing a table for him, you are calling him by name, you are saying, my husband, you shall be successful. I know the business is not working now, but I'm interceding as I am cooking for you. When you take one bite, it will be as though you are... Uh, what are you doing? You are interceding. Listen, when you are called for a date, na amechelewa, wacha kununa, anza tu kuomba hapo java, reba baba baba bashaka tatata. This man shall be on time next time. That's why na ingia na pata mdomo iko huko kwa ceiling. Look at a neighbor, and tell the neighbor, neighbor, intercede. That is what priests do. What do they do? They intercede. They stand in the gap. The Bible is telling us something here. Look at what the Bible is saying. Jesus does not even tell Peter. He tells Peter, I am praying for you. Hansi kuagi una Peter. Where Peter una juona kuanga mtu wa short temper. Nini nini. No, what is Jesus doing? Jesus is interceding for him. In this year, I decree and declare, God shall arise intercessors in this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask your neighbor why they're not saying amen. 
Wait, wake up, niweke hiyo maandiko. Aha. Wait, wait, look at verse number 33. What does it say? Peter told him, Lord, I am ready to go even to prison and to die with you. But Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will crow today until you deny three times that you know. Do you see people who have not ascended? They are making promises that they can't even keep. They are saying, ah, yeah, 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 what are you talking about? I'm ready to go to the grave with you. Then munatishiwa na 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 to boys to will evil to kona kakisu. Unona jama wako me take off. Na me anakuwa chapo. Have you seen a clip like that one? Hey, mbaka wa easy yata wana wana. Hey, wacha tatu mrudishi eh. Hey, boy child. Hey. The guy is saying what? I am ready to go to the grave for you. Did he go? Did he go? What happened when Jesus Christ was caught? He said that man, which man? Where? Where? Me I have never seen that man before. Ladies and gentlemen, we must get into this place of interceding. Turn to a neighbor, tell a neighbor, neighbor. This role is for giants. Who intercede? If you are not interceding, muangalie tu kwa macho, muangalie ndani ya macho. Look at Moses. Look at Exodus 17. Exodus 17. Exodus 17. Let's read it together. Want to go? After this, the Amalekites came and fought. Uh huh. Moses told Joshua, choose some men for us and go out to fight against the Amalekites. Uh huh. Tomorrow, I'll stand on top of a hill with the staff of God in my hand. Uh huh. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against the Amalekites while Moses. Aaron and her went up to the top of the hill. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me and listen to me carefully. M Moses is going out for battle. They are going out for battle. What are they doing? They are going for battle. Moses tells, tells uh, Joshua, Joshua, you think this battle is won by sword. My friend, you are joking. This battle is not won by sword. These battles are won on top of the mountain. Sasa wewe unashinda huko ukitishana na na slick queens. Bwana sifiwe. Sasa hata uachilie mzee, hakuna kitu anaweza fanya juu uko na yeye bumper to bumper, bumper to bumper. Sina ubaya na mtu. Bwana sifiwe. Asi bwana sifiwe. Listen ladies and gentlemen. Moses is telling Joshua, Joshua, I know how this battle is won. Can I show you how this battle is won? Listen to what the Bible says. Want to go in verse number 11? Whenever Moses raised his hands, the Israelites prevailed. But when his hands remained at his side, then the Amalekites prevailed. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to lift up our hands to the heavens because that's how we win our battles. We win our battles at the place where we are raising our hands to the heaven. We are interceding for Joshua. As my son is going to school, you are interceding for him. What are you doing? You are raising your hands. As you come home in the evening, what you take time and hour, you are interceding for your business. What are you doing? You are raising that business up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Number two, number two, quickly, quickly. Quickly, who is a priest? A priest is a gatekeeper. This one I told you last Sunday. I'll not dwell much on it. Who is a gatekeeper? A gatekeeper is the one who allows something to come in or allows something to go out. Listen to what Elijah said. What does he say? Want to go? Elijah the foreigner, who was an alien resident of Gilead, told Ahab. Uh -huh. The Lord God of Israel lives. In whose presence I'm standing, there will be neither dew nor rain these next several years, except when I say so. In other words, this is the man who will allow either there will be rain or not. And the Bible tells us something, that Elijah was a man of like passion like we are. So he has no difference with you. Praise the name of the Lord. You can stand in the gap. 
I said you can stand in the gap. I said you can stand in the gap in Jesus' mighty name. You can stand as a gate and decree and declare that in my house no more alcohol in Jesus' mighty name. What are you doing? You are standing as a gate. Amen. Some of you are not even saying amen. Because you are not a Number three, number three, because we need to finish. We need to finish this. Number three, look at number three. What does number three say? A priest is also acts as a covering. A priest acts, acts, acts as a what? A covering. As the father of this house, I cover you. As the mother hen covers its cheeks, that a hook, when it is on top of a, say, what are they called? On a tree. It is looking and searching for what? Chicks. But the mother hen, it, as it is eating, as it is pecking, the eye of the mother hen is on its children. And it's also in the air. And what is it doing? It is covering the chicks. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when you become a priest... When you are sent into uh, that position and place of a priest, you begin to become a covering to people. Let me show you a scripture so that you believe me. Listen to what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? Listen to this. Uh huh. Want to go? Pay attention to yourselves and to the entire flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to be shepherds of God's church, which, which he acquired, acquired with his own, own blood. blood. Verse number 29, want to go? Let's read it together. I know no. that when I'm gone, savage wolves will come among you and not spare the flock. Paul is telling and admonishing this church. And he's saying to this church, there is need for me to stay here. I know you feel you have matured. I know some of you have even become overseers. But there is need for me to stay here. Why? I am the one who established this church. And guess what? I have become a covering for this church. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying to the children there or, 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 or to the congregants there, he's saying, when I leave, I know what is going to happen. What is going to happen? Savage wolves will come and rage havoc on the congregation here. Buona sifiwe. When you become a priest... When you ascend into your position of priesthood, you cover the people around you. Ayya. That wolves will not come anywhere near your people. There are some places, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to arise and say that in this house, people will not be falling sick. People will not be taking drugs. People will not be taking alcohol. Why? I am a covering in this house. Amen. Savage wolves will not come anywhere near my relationship. Amen. When you don't arise, Unashanga, what is wrong with my partner? Every time Nivita, every time you meet Nivita, you are wondering what is wrong. It is because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a vrugouk on a savage wolves. But when you become a covering, you are like the mother hen. Though there is a hawk somewhere, it, do you know a hawk never even tries when it sees the mother hen around? Doesn't even try. But when there is no covering, ladies and gentlemen, it is a walk in, and the devil walks out the way he wants. You must become a covering. You, that's why you've got to wake up and pray. We will make a shop campesa. Isu zingine zote ziko sawa. Yako tundi inaibiwa kila sa. Watu wako mekujana gani? It's because walking ya kwa shop. Hakuna kitu unafanya, unanza tu kuongea na neighbors. Oh, hehehe, chisayo jana ilikuwaje. Friday. You must become a covering to whatsoever God has given you jurisdictions over. Let's finish this thing. I'm seeing some of you are beginning to get worried now. Hallelujah. Number four is that a priest carries 
authority over territories. A priest, what does a priest do? He carries an authority over a territory. As a father of that house, you can stand and say, I have authority in this house. And you, you know, you don't tell people. It's not people you are telling. Don't confuse. You stand in your place in your spirit man. And you stand and say, I am the authority here. Ladies and gentlemen, a priest carries an authority over territories. Let me show you in scripture. Let me show you in scripture. What does he do? I said, what does he do? He carries authority. Look at a neighbor and tell that neighbor, neighbor, from today, you must carry some level of authority. Acts chapter 9 and verse number 3. Let's read it together. One to go. A soul traveled along and was approaching Damascus. A light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. He dropped to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The voice said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. Uh -huh. Listen to what he says there. After what does he say? Now, now get up. Go into the city and you will be told what you are to do. Shh. Jesus has all authority. Jesus should have told him. I mean, Jesus is telling the man, wake up and go to the city and it will be told you what you need to do. But I'm with you here, Lord. Tell me. It's because, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something. God respects order. God respects order. He has put somebody in charge in that city. And because God respects order, he wants the instructions to come from that man. You see, many of you now, because you don't like authority and order, you are not saying amen. Jesus comes up, he says, the calling is mine because men cannot call you. It is God who calls you. But the laying on of hands is men who will do it. So he says to him, go to the city of Damascus and it will be told you what you must do. Can I show you what happened thereafter? Uh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Put up the scripture. So Jesus tells him, go to Damascus. What does the man do? Want to go? Meanwhile, the, the men who were traveling with Saul were standing speechless, for they heard the voice but didn't see anyone. When Saul got up off the ground, he couldn't see anything, even though his eyes were open. Uh -huh. so, so his companions, companions took him by the hand and led him to Damascus. Uh -huh. When he went to Damascus, for, for three, three days, days he, he couldn't, couldn't see, and he didn't eat or drink anything. Now in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. Ananias. The Lord, Lord called out to him in a vision. Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord told him, get up, go to the street called Straight, and in the home of Judas, look for a man from Tarus named Saul. At th this very moment, he's praying. Shh. So now God tells Saul, get up, go to the city, and it will be told you what you must do. Isn't it? God goes, now Jesus goes to the man with the authority of that city. In charge of that city. He tells that man in that city, there is a man coming. And that man is called Saul of Tyres. And that man, Saul of Tyres, I have worked for him. What do you need to do? You need to anoint him and you need to pray for him. And he will receive his miracle. So God calls the man on this side. But God has put somebody in charge of a territory that he goes to him and he tells him, this is what you must tell this man who is coming that you pray for him. Because Ananias did not know. But yet Ananias is the leader, is the authority in that space. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes you're waiting for God to act and God has made you an authority in your jurisdiction. He's actually waiting for you to act. Listen.
Listen, when they got into the Red Sea, what does the Bible say? He told Moses, Moses, why are you crying out to me? What is in your hands? Strike the water. And when he struck the water, the Bible says, the water parted. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I've come to tell you you have authority over your body. Sickness cannot be coming in and coming out the way it wants. I have a, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I am a priest. I have what? Authority over the territory that God has given to me. That's why my business cannot go down. That's why this nation cannot go down. Because God has given us jurisdiction over this city, this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we must stand in our place of authority and declare nothing will go wrong in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Turn to a neighbor and tell the neighbor, neighbor, you are a man or a woman of authority. I told you that's not a good neighbor. Shout it out to them and tell them, you are a man or a woman of authority. That's why we must fast. So that you bring this body under subjection, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, I wish somebody would have said amen. And you tell this body there are things that enter into this body and it is not sickness. It is not disease. It is not infirmity. It is not mental disorders in Jesus' name. Anxiety, you have no place. I have full authority over this body. And anxiety and depression, you have no place in my life. Bona sifiwe. You need to learn to stand up and speak with authority because you are a priest in the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me show you the last one and then we are, we'll be done for today. We'll be done. We'll be done. Oh my. Ay, 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 ay. Time has gone. Time has gone. A priest is also a watcher. He's at an elevated place. And what does he do? He watches. That's why when you read in the Old Testament, prophets were called seers. What were they called? Seers. That's why it troubled Isaiah, uh, not Isaiah, but uh, Elisha. When the, the Shunammite woman, the Bible came, the, when the Shunammite woman came, the Bible says, she looks troubled, but the Lord has not revealed to me what is going on with her. When you stand in your place of priesthood, you become a watcher. You know things way before they happen. Hallelujah. What do you do? You know of things way before they happen. Why? Because you have interacted with the spirit world. You already know what is coming. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, you... Listen, the Bible says that God never does anything on earth before he first reveals it to men. He doesn't do anything in your family. God does not come to do anything in your family before he can reveal it to you. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we must stand in our elevated place and begin to see where is the music going? Where, what is the Lord saying? What is the next trend? What is the next thing that the Lord is doing? Why? Because as you stand as a priest, you stand as a watcher. You are able to see beyond what your natural eyes can see. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to teach you in, in coming days. Uh, I haven't even told you a few things here and there about how do you become then this priest. How do you become this priest in the house of God? That's why you need to be here uh, coming Sunday. You need to be here so that I tell you how did God enact and make a uh, uh, priest in the book of Exodus 28. You will find there when he called Aaron and his sons to be priests. What did he say that they must become? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there are some five things I've told you here today. A priest is a what? An intercessor. A priest is a what?
less than 30 minutes. <laughs> a priest, number one, a priest is a what? A priest is a what? Number two. Number three, a priest is a what? A covering. Number three, a priest is a what? And then a priest is a what? A watch. Stand up on your feet as we come to the end of our service. Listen. If you don't take time to intercede, I can guarantee you probably nobody is interceding for you. If you don't take time to stand as a gatekeeper, maybe nobody is doing it. If you don't stand and become a covering in that career and what the Lord is doing in your life, then I can guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, probably nobody is doing it. If you're not watching, who is? That's why this year you must make up your mind to pray. Make up your mind to, to fast. As we do the three days of prayer, dry prayer and fasting, at every beginning of the week, you must make up your mind to do so. Because this is what priests do. If I don't pray for my children, who is praying for them? I wonder. But today I bring you a message to tell you. This is what priests do in their home. That's why you must set on fire your altar. Your altar must be on fire. You must take time and pray. And where you have not stood firm to pray today, why don't you, as you're standing like that, tell the Lord, Lord, I will do better in coming days. Maybe you have not been able to pray. You have not been burning incense on that altar. You've not been praying. I am praying for you. May a certain fire be bathed inside of you that you will stand in the gap for your family. That we will find men and women who will stand in the gap for their children. Men and women who will stand in the gap for their country. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us here today. 